I'd like to share with you my story of becoming a creative entrepreneur. Well, you know, you have to go back a long way. I'm not as young as I look. So you have to imagine me back in the 1980s with hair, actually with long hair and a beard, back in my hometown in the north of England, where along with some friends, we decided to set up a community bookshop. We didn't really regard it uh, as a business or ourselves as business people. Uh, I regarded myself, I suppose, then as a, a community activist and a, you know, a cultural entrepreneur. Somebody who wanted to change the world using uh, culture for the sake of community. To make books available uh, from all around the world, from different cultures, to inform people. And so I guess it was um, in many senses a social enterprise, although that term wasn't used at the time. And we set it up as a workers cooperative um, with eight of us involved in different ways, um, working together to achieve the goals which were um, mainly, as I say, cultural, but also we had to be financially sustainable. So that meant that we had to learn about business very quickly. And although I was uncomfortable with the idea of being called a, a young businessman, um, and I kind of rejected that term, felt awkward, because business in some ways was a, a dirty word for me at that time of my life. Nevertheless, I had to learn very quickly um, about such things as um, cash flow, contracts with suppliers, dealing with landlords who owned our premises, uh, talking with accountants and bank managers, uh, all kinds of administrative systems and employing people and managing people, not to mention you know, tax and all the stuff that comes with business. And so we learned by making plenty of mistakes and I'm you know, not ashamed to say I've made lots of mistakes, uh, especially in the early days, and I learned from them. And although I was uncomfortable with the, you know, with the sense or the, the name of being called a, a businessman, um, I came to realize that the tools and techniques of business can be used for any purpose. Just by using business ideas and business models doesn't mean that they force you to sell out your values or become a different kind of person. No, it's quite the opposite. The tools of business are neutral and we can use them in whatever way we want according to our own values and objectives. So marketing can be used to tell lies, to be dishonest, to con people or coerce people into buying what they don't want, if that's what you choose to do. But the same you know, rules and techniques of marketing can be, used, can be used to communicate effectively, to listen to customers, to have real uh, value-based win-win situations with customers and other stakeholders. So, you know, it's up to us how we use the tools of business. And I came to realize that. So learning through uh, mistakes, um, going on short courses, learning from other people, uh, having some uh, great successes. I worked in the bookshop and then later on in book publishing, where I was the finance and publishing coordinator at a small uh, publishers in Manchester. And then I became the managing director of a book distribution and um, marketing company called Password Books, which uh, I grew uh, internationally. And we offered from initially just a sales service, a full distribution service. And so I learned a tremendous amount about business working in that sector, which you know, now we call the creative industries, although that term wasn't even invented when I was working there. And during the time at Password Books, I, um, I studied for an MBA. I did it part-time, the executive MBA, while I was also managing director. This was me going to the university for the first time, age 35. And I decided deliberately to do what you might call the standard or hardcore MBA, rather than a special MBA for the creative sector or voluntary sector or something different. Because I wanted to learn how you know, the bigger businesses, uh, the commercial businesses did things, not so that we could copy them directly, but so that we could steal the best ideas and then adapt them to our own purposes. And so 
it was a it was a great adventure actually and exciting intellectually and exciting in the sense that I felt like a spy from the the creative and cultural sector sitting there in the lectures with 40 or other people many of whom were dressed in pinstripe suits coming from their executive jobs in banks and building societies and large corporations and um, so yeah I felt like a spy stealing the best ideas working out um, how this was relevant to me and my smaller business and then you know getting some fantastic insights into how we could adapt these principles and the techniques of business to suit our own objectives fitting in with our own values and then after some years um, I started to be invited to advise arts organizations and small creative businesses on things like business planning you know they told me they knew all about dance or design or photography or film but they wanted some help with the the business side of things and they knew I was from the creative sector so perhaps I was the guy to um, to help them and I did this as a little extra thing until the time came for me to leave my day job and set up full-time as a consultant in the creative industries and over the last 20 years I've worked as a business advisor business coach um, and consultant advising businesses directly I've developed training courses I've written two books and I often speak at conferences around the world about creative entrepreneurship so all these things fit together and that's my career nowadays and I've been lucky enough to work in more than 50 countries around the world spreading the world spreading the word about creative entrepreneurship and how you can combine creativity with smart business thinking and for myself I've set up various companies along the way I've been in business partnerships um, I've invested in businesses and my main business right now is uh, as I say in helping people to combine their creative passions and talents with smart business thinking usually in small businesses uh, often in uh, arts organizations too and some larger institutions uh, all around the world and for myself I'm creative in the studio and in the office as a creative I'm a publisher and a writer I make videos as you can see and I, I publish those as part of my work and then I'm creative of course in the business office in the way that I do business um, using creative business models and smart techniques to help my own business to become even more successful in terms of my mission uh, my creativity uh, my uh, willingness to help creative entrepreneurs and of course to make it work commercially successfully as well so my story resonates with lots of people in the creative industries although they didn't have the same exact trajectory as me they can relate to the fact that I set up um, coming from a non-business angle and yet embracing business to enable me to do what I wanted to do in life which was around culture and creativity and making a difference to the world and that's where I established this rapport with my clients and that's um, that gives me credibility in the creative industries when people want advice from somebody who gets them somebody who knows what it's about rather than you might say a more standard uh, business advisor so that's my story um, make of it what you want but it perhaps helps you to understand where I'm coming from in the comments I'll say in other videos and when you read my books and look at my website so check me out and see what I'm all about and you can read my story also on my website